I had to do a spoiler talk on this book because at this point, Allie Hazelwood has become a channel tradition. Hey guys, welcome back. Here we are. I finally got around to reading Love Theoretically, and now it's time for my spoiler talk. After my initial obsession with the love hypothesis, I have done a spoiler talk on all of Allie Hazelwood's adult releases, um, trying to chase that high I felt after reading the love hypothesis, and I have been sorely disappointed so far. All of these past spoiler talks will be linked down below if you want to check them out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss future videos. So my hopes going into this novel was that Allie wasn't going to tell me 10,000 times how large the main male character was and how teeny tiny the female main character was. And also that it wouldn't be her typical setup of, you know, he's been in love with her forever and this is that's why he's weird around her. But she, you know, thought that he was a jerk forever. But, you know, now he's hot and oh, you have feelings for me? Okay, let's bang. So the setup for this book stays in Allie's typical STEM realm. The two main characters are Elsie and Jack. They are physicists and Elsie hates Jack on behalf of her mentor because Jack ruined this mentor's career at some point. Also, Elsie has a bit of a fake dating business going on. And for the past six months, she's been fake dating Jack's brother. So now Jack has always had a thing for who he thought was his brother's girlfriend, Elsie, obviously. So these two main characters are thrust together when Jack is on the board of the hiring committee for this MIT job that Elsie has applied for. Now, Allie's writing style is quirksy and cutesy and tries to enter like this child like humor. So if you're not in the mood for that, it will definitely rub you the wrong way. It really rides the line of talking science and STEM, but then also making a ton of Twilight references, which is such an interesting combination. Also, interestingly, Twilight is talked about a lot in this book, which was my favorite part of this book, naturally. The science stuff, I was like, yeah, yeah. Whenever Elsie would be talking about how much she loves Twilight, I'd be like, girl, me too. Now in Allie's author note at the end of the book, she does talk about how this is her most sciencey book that she's ever published. And I completely agree with this. She talked about really wanting to dive into like the politics of science. And I think she totally did. And for me, that was why I was less interested in the book. I personally don't think there was anything wrong with the book. I think that her writing style has greatly improved. The story had a well-rounded and executed plot. Just personally for me, I liked it less because of all the science and politics stuff. But for others, this may cause them to like it more. So it's just all personal taste. Romance wise, I really didn't see what Jack saw in Elsie. I wish we would have had more buildup of them meeting over the times that Elsie was fake dating his brother. But as it was, I felt like the romance was just kind of out of the blue. And to be fair, Elsie made it seem pretty clear in the book that it was out of the blue for her too. But once the romance did progress and the characters actually spent time together, um, I did start rooting for them by the end. Okay, so spoiler time. If you have not read this book and you don't want things ruined, Bye. But if you do want spoilers, here we go. So the book opens up with Elsie doing her fake dating thing with one of her regular clients. Normally, she doesn't do repeat clients but for the sake of the story. She's been fake dating Greg Smith for about six months, and she's just been going to random family functions with him. Her main job at these family functions is to act as a buffer in between Greg and his overwhelming mother. But of course, Greg also has an older brother who has been at all of these family functions. Elsie, of course, doesn't really think that they get along super great, maybe because brother Jack is just judgy and he thinks Greg could do better, but he's actually standoffish because he has a huge crush on Elsie. Now the big crux of the novel is that Elsie is in the interviewing process with MIT to become a professor. So we have this family function and then the next day after Elsie goes to this family function, which was a grandmother's 
birthday thing. She has an interview dinner at a restaurant with some MIT people. Naturally, Jack is one of them. Shock from both characters. But Elsie has to play it cool because she is up against another candidate, George, and it's been made pretty clear to her that the majority of the interviewers are leaning towards that other person. Now, Jack and Elsie not knowing about each other before this interview um, is explained by firstly, Elsie not using her real profession um, like during her fake dating things. And also Jack's professional name is Dr. Jonathan Smith Turner. So they have this moment in the men's restroom where Jack is like, why are you lying to my brother? Which is funny because that's such a funny thing to lie about, like lying to your boyfriend about the fact that your boyfriend, about the fact that you have your doctorate. Come on, Jack. Clearly that's not what's happening here. But Elsie is all like, I can't tell you what's really going on. You need to talk to Greg, which damn, she is loyal to him because if it was me and my potential dream job was in jeopardy because one of the interviewers thinks that you're this liar, I would have straight up been like, I'm just fake dating your brother. Please ignore this and give me the job. Now, of course, it wouldn't be an Allie Hazelwood book if the um, main character didn't hate the love interest at some point in the book. So Elsie has this mentor who, by the way, for the past like five years that they've known each other, he calls her Elise instead of Elsie. <sighs> that ruined her name for the entire rest of the book for me because as soon as I read that he called her Elsie, I c my brain couldn't stop calling her Elsie anytime I would see Elise pop up. I was so confused. I was like, what is your name? Anyway, so when Elsie was in like middle school, Jack was 17 at the time and he submitted this paper to some physics magazine, basically dogging on theoretical physics. They didn't catch on that he was making fun of them, apparently, and it was published and basically Elsie's mentor became a laughing stock um, of the community because he was the editor of the magazine. And that's where the hate blooms from. Now moving into the 25% mark of the book, we have this little like confrontation with Elsie and Jack at MIT. Um, he tells her that he can tell that she puppets herself to mold like her personality to like whoever she's interacting with. And that's kind of a big thing we see her do throughout the book. And that's a big thing that she kind of starts to work on. And that's like her big area of growth throughout the book. He says that he can tell that she analyzes people and then changes herself into this version of herself that the other person will find agreeable. Which I found it was interesting that he <laughs> has met her only a few times and he's like, girl, I know what you're doing. And of course, Elsie is surprised that Jack has been noticing this because they haven't been around each other that much. So we're fast forwarding to an academic mixer at one of the MIT interview panel people's houses. We get more interactions of Elsie and Jack, you know, the usual little bits of miscommunication. Jack compliments her. She thinks he's being condescending. And then Jack starts this new catchphrase throughout the novel. Whenever things get heated in one of their discussions or arguments, he just stops and goes, what happened to you, Elsie? <laughs> Can you imagine someone you barely know just in a conversation with dead ass looking at you and being like, what happened to you? Is it just me or is that like a little bit intrusive or like rude? So clearly he knows something happened in Elsie's past that has made her become this person that changes her personality to mold to make other people like her. But still, damn, you're just gonna call her out like that at this mixer in this fancy person's house? like. Okay. Then the truth comes out about the whole fake dating thing. She gets a call from a dental office to come pick up Greg because he was taken there during one of his works off the grid retreats and he's had emergency surgery for a tooth abscess. So Elsie and Jack both show up because they were both called and they take him home. Basically, Greg is all drugged up from the surgery and it's pretty obvious and Jack figures it out. Then at that point, basically Greg is just not really in the book anymore. So the whole aspect of the whole fake dating thing with him ended up being a very minor part of the book in my opinion. So after Jack figures it out, he has this surprising 
heart to heart with Elsie, like kind of leading into the 50% mark of the book, Jack basically just lays everything out to her and tells her about how enthralled he was with her after only meeting her for a few times as Greg's girlfriend. So first off, I was happy that we didn't make it through the whole book with Jack not knowing about the fake dating. I'm glad we got that miscommunication out of the way. Then I was a little disappointed that Elsie, even after Jack laying everything out was like, what? <laughs> It didn't feel like she like quite comprehended like that he was telling her like, oh my God, I, I like you so much, Elsie. Elsie, I like you so much. And she's like, although at the same time, I do kind of get it. It would be weird to have the random brother of a client whom you've met a handful of times tell you this long gushy speech about how he likey you. Like, I don't know what I would say. So Elsie mulls this over and then it occurs to her that she, so she's been, of course, she's been attracted to Jack this entire time because, you know, he's tall and blonde and beautiful and muscular and all that stuff, which I do have to say, props to Allie. I do feel like she toned it way back with talking about how like big and beautiful the main male character was in the book. It was really bad in her novellas. I felt like it was constant in the novellas, but I am very happy with this one. I felt like Obviously she talked about it in the beginning and then it felt as the novel went on, she definitely petered that out a bit, which kind of makes sense because at the 50% mark, even Elsie, our, you know, obviously the character whose head we've been in this whole time, she says that it occurs to her that her attraction to Jack now has a little to do with him being this tall, handsome man and everything to do with how perceptive he is. So it's out in the open that he has a little crush, but nothing really happens with it. Um, so then Elsie and her roommate are out on the town and they run into Jack with this bombshell of a woman. And it turns out that this bombshell is George, the other MIT candidate. So George mentions like when they're making introductions, like, oh, I'm going to be working with Jack soon at MIT. And Elsie loses it. She freaks out because this was her way of finding out you didn't get the job. So she didn't get the job. She gets upset. She runs away. <laughs> um, Jack catches up with her and he reasons with her to go back to his place to talk about the job. Now, if you're expecting a sexy scene to come up here, <laughs> no. They literally just talk about the job. It was very unsexy. Jack basically just says that the job was always going to be given to George because she was basically like the one candidate before Elsie even applied. And like, it was always just going to be her. So now moving like past the 50% mark of the book, I actually started getting more invested like story-wise. I really wanted to know how this was going to turn out for Elsie. We know that she didn't get the job and the big crux of the novel was surrounding this job. So where are we even going with the second half of this book? Now with the second half of the book, we end up developing the romantic relationship more. Obviously, Jack is just submitting kitten with Elsie. And so after their little non-sexual slumber party, um, they wake up the next day and he asks her on a date. And she straight up is like, no. <laughs> and he's like, okay. <laughs> and he doesn't push it, which I did love how he handled the rejection. I mean, like nobody likes somebody who can't take no for an answer. Elsie starts getting more information about Jack's background. For example, his mother died when he was a baby, um, but she was actually a theoretical physicist. And that little tidbit is important for later on in the book. He's taking her home and Elsie has like this moment where she like realizes like, I will never have to see him again after this moment right here. Like there's no reason for us to see each other. The whole thing with Greg is out in the open. I'm not fake dating him anymore. I didn't get the job. Like we don't really have any other reason to like interact anymore. And she was sad about that, which I mean, like as a reader, you were kind of like, yeah, that's kind of weird. Like you just have no reason to see him again because you told him no to his date. So she changes her mind about the date. So they start dating. Um, his only condition with the date is that she needs to be herself and not like these characters that she constantly is putting on, which, you know, is going to be hard for her. And she acknowledges that because like, does she even know who she is anymore? 
At this point in the book, like who wouldn't like Jack as a main male character? I mean, he's understanding and he's sexy. <laughs> and he wants to get to know the real you. I mean, I don't know. He might be a little bit too dreamy for me in terms of book boyfriends. I mean, at least with Adam in the love hypothesis, he was made a little bit more normal by the fact that he was like really great towards Olive and like really, really liked her, but he was not super great at social situations with everybody else. I mean, so Elsie's mentor doesn't like Jack, but that mentor is a shitty character. So he doesn't really count. Speaking of him also, by the way, I, at this point, I started getting so sick about hearing about this article that Jack wrote when he was 17 and how Elsie doesn't know if she should like Jack now because of him writing this article. So much of her internal dialogue was her being like, he wrote this mean article about my career and like, yeah, that sucks. But I mean, maybe I'm not like in on the whole like, is this this thing <laughs> like the whole thing between theoretical and experimental physicists there's like i don't even know what to call it there's friction there moving on so elsie should not have been upset about not getting the mit job it's pretty clear that she does not like teaching um so really her not getting the job at mit was like a good thing you know so her big thing is like she wants to be a researcher so elsie gets this job offer from george to come and work postdoc in her lab as a researcher which is the job that she like legitimately wants to do so back to the relationship stuff jack is trying to get elsie to be more of like herself and make these decisions based on like what she actually wants versus just agreeing with like what everybody else wants. This kind of stems from in her past, she fake dated her roommate to make his ex jealous. And then the lines got blurred and she felt like they were actually dating. She like molded herself to like change into like this perfect little girlfriend for him, you know? And then once his ex wanted to get back together, he was like, cool and then he kicked elsie out of the apartment but that was like years ago when she was like a sophomore or something in college but it still haunts her to this day and that's why she is the way she is now so the whole thing with jack and elsie dating just seems to be a lot of him trying to get her to a point where she's comfortable being honest and open about the things that she wants and the things that she wants to do so character wise we see elsie changing and becoming a lot more confident i still didn't really Really feel like I knew Jack as a character very much. It was just kind of the fact that like he really liked Elsie and he was like super supportive of her. Obviously there's a lot focused on Elsie. She's the main character of the book so that's expected. I do wish that this would have been a dual point of view book. Um, I felt like maybe that would have been a little bit more fulfilling towards Jack's point of view as well. I definitely tend to enjoy dual point of view books better. I feel like they feel more well-rounded. I like that we have like two main characters and we can see them both change and grow throughout the story. But with this one, obviously it was mainly just everybody just rallying around Elsie, which is fine. You know, it was, it's her book, but I, I felt like I wanted a little bit more from Jack. Now, smut-wise, Allie Hazelwood really waited on the sexy scenes. The 75% mark of the book ends with them basically just doing hand stuff because Jack's like, we're not ready for sex. And then at the 80% mark, they've barely spent any more time together. And Jack's already being like, I'm thinking about asking you to move in with me. And Elsie's like, I feel like it's time for sex. <laughs> but I also feel like this thing could be like a forever thing between us. And I was like, whoa, I feel like we got to that stage incredibly quickly. Like it's only been a few weeks of them dating and they're already like, I really like you. So basically at this point, they've, pretty much profess their love for each other. I don't think that they actually legitimately was like, I love you, but you know, he's over here like move in. So it's kind of the same thing. We still have like 20% left in this dang book. And I was mentally preparing myself for this unnecessary breakup because that's typical of romance novels, of course. But this breakup comes in a form that I actually felt was very natural. I will give that to Allie Hazelwood. We finally bring up this magazine article paper thing that has been looming over the whole book the whole time. And the big issue between 
theoretical physicist and experimental physicist, which I still don't get. So basically, Elsie and Jack get into a fight about this magazine article that he wrote like 15 years previously. He admits that writing the article was out of anger and revenge to try and specifically ruin Dr. L's career because uh, Dr. L had ruined his mother's career before she passed away. Elsie, with her mentor being Dr. L and how much she likes likes him, respects him, I suppose. Feels like she owes him the world. So Elsie gets mad that Jack withheld this information from her and the information mainly being that Jack knows firsthand how much of a bad person Dr. L is and how he doesn't feel like he has Elsie's best interests in mind. Basically, Jack's been withholding the fact that he hates Dr. L. Um, and hasn't been telling Elsie that, but Elsie's like, you should have told me, but he's like, oh, I didn't know if you were ready. And she's like, I should have been the one to decide that. <laughs> Elsie brings up the fact that we've been, these past few weeks, they've only been dating for a few weeks. That's crazy. So the past few weeks that they've been dating, he had plenty of opportunities to bring up the whole Dr. L situation, which is fair. But Jack does point out that Elsie wouldn't have understood because she's so manipulated by Dr. L which is also true. So of course they break up and then Elsie starts making decisions for herself, which was good. Um, you know, that's kind of the whole point of the novel, like kind of getting, being along the journey with her becoming a stronger person. So she goes to Dr. L's office to tell him about her job offer from George. Unsurprisingly, he's like, I don't think that's a good move for us. You won't accept that position. <laughs> and so finally with this, it clicks to Elsie that Dr. L hasn't, ever had her best interest at heart. Like he just liked to be able to control her, which I personally felt like this interaction was very anticlimactic. Essentially she's standing up to her bully from the entire book, right? But it more felt like this moment where she's like, obviously I don't owe you anything. You're a shitty mentor. Like I'm just gonna get away from you now. It wasn't as like grandiose as I would have liked. That's why I didn't really talk about the whole thing, the mentor thing throughout the whole book. I kind of wish it would have been dove into more because most of the time throughout the book, like she would just talk about how she wanted to talk to Dr. L about things, but he was like out of town. And so she couldn't really, it didn't feel very complete, but she stands up to her mentor bully and then she accepts George's job offer to be the researcher, because obviously. Lastly, the book ends with Elise, Elsie. Oh God, I did it! <laughs> Have I been saying Elsie or Elise this whole time? So lastly, the book ends with Elsie seeing an article that Jack published in this same magazine that he did 15 years before, um, basically explaining his reasoning behind the original article, his revenge for his mother against Dr. L. And he explains that he is now, that he has grown um, and is an adult, that he is ashamed about what the article has meant to the science community over the last 15 years. This is the moment in the book that was, quote, the science equivalent of proposing with a flash mob. Of course, for me, it didn't really pack much of like a punch because none of this science stuff in the book did, but I'm assuming that this was a very large romantic gesture from Jack. So in the end, Elsie goes and she finds him. They make up, they have a happy ending, of course. Love, love, love. Then we have the epilogue, which is eight months later. Not gonna lie, I wanted a more dramatic ending. I wanted a proposal. It ends with Elsie giving Jack a note that says, I know I've been slow, but I wanted you to know something. I'm right here with you. And it just ends. Throughout the epilogue, Elsie talks about how she knew that Jack wanted to marry her. So I thought the note was going to have a marriage proposal in it from her, but it didn't. But I would love to have um, more marriage proposals from women in books. I think that would be lovely. You don't always get what you want. <laughs> now, I always say I am done with Allie's adult contemporary romances. I feel like at the end of every spoiler talk since like the novellas, I've been like, huh. <laughs> I was on such like this incredible high from the love hypothesis, which I, f and now I'm like, I feel like I need to reread that. I don't know, I'm always very curious. And so her books always have me like crawling back to her. I do have to say, she has a paranormal romance novel, Bride, which is set to release in 2024. And I am like really looking forward to this book because it's like a vampire werewolf book. 
And obviously preteen me was obsessed with Twilight. As a result of that, now I cannot resist a vampire book. So of course I'll be reading that one when it comes out. And now I realize that Allie Hazelwood must have been a Twilight fan too, because there were so many Twilight references in this book. And now with this new book coming out, Bride, I am very excited because I am in love with the idea of reading some Twilight fanfic by Allie. So that's it for me today, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.